We'll now look at merge sort. So merge sort is a really fast algorithm. It's a divide and conquer algorithm. The way divide and conquer algorithms work is to solve a problem, you break the problem down into halves and then solve each half in the same way. So you create two problems that are the same as the original, just smaller, and then solve those in the same way. So with merge sort, the way it works is we've got a pile of cards that are not in the right order. They're all shuffled up and we want them in sorted order with the smallest number at the front. So how do we do that? Well, to start off with, the first person who's holding all the cards doesn't have to do anything. They're basically like a manager and they're lazy. So they, rather than do any work themselves, delegate to the two people behind them. So what they do is take the pack of cards and split it exactly in half. So here we've got 16 cards, we'll split into two halves of eight. And each of those pass us back to a person behind. And so now they've got the same problem as the first person had. They now have a pack of cards to try and put in sorted order. But they're lazy like he is, so they're not going to do any work unless they have to. And they do the same thing. They solve the problem in exactly the same way they did. They've just got a slightly smaller problem. But what they do is, again, split the pile in two and then delegate to the people behind them and give two smaller piles, one to each of the people behind them. And now we've got four people with a sort problem where they've got to sort a pile of cards. But again, it's a smaller problem than the people before had. It's a simpler problem. How do they solve it? They solve it in exactly the same way. That's what divide and conquer is about. You always solve the problem in the same way until you get down to a trivial situation. So what do they do? They split their pile in half and pass the two piles back to the people behind them and give them the job to sort them. Now at this point, each of these people, because we only had 16 cards to sort, has essentially a trivial problem because they only have two cards to sort. And that's quite easy to do. All they can do, all they need to do is compare those two values and look and see which is the smallest and put the smallest to the front. So they compare the two, the smallest goes to the front, and now they've sorted their pile. So now we've got eight piles of cards, each of that are sorted. Of course, the values are spread all over the place, but within those pairs that those people have got, they're in sorted order. So what do they do now? They don't have to pass back to anybody else. Now we can start passing the cards back forwards. So the way we do this is each of the four people in front turn and they do what's called a merge algorithm. They look at their pair of cards and of the pair they were responsible for, the two piles, they take the smallest card out of the two piles that they can see. So they each take the smallest card and then you're left with the same problem again. You've got two cards, take the smallest of the pair, and of the cards that are still there, take the smallest that you can see, and you keep doing this, each time taking the smallest and putting it to the back of their pile until all the cards have gone. And now these four people have now got a pile of four cards that again are sorted. Of course, they're still mixed up between the piles, but within each pile of four, they're in sorted order with the smallest at the front, the largest at the back. So what do they do now? They've done their job, so they're going to pass the cards forward in the same way. So the, the row in front, they are now going to look at their two cards and take the smallest of the ones they can see. Because the smallest in the whole pack is bound to be at the front of one of the two piles each time. And then the next smallest will be revealed. Because each pile is in sorted order, the next smallest will always be at the front of one pile or the other. So they do that, again, doing the merge algorithm, taking the smallest each time until they've got all the cards. And now we're in a situation where we've got two piles of eight cards, and those two piles of eight cards are each in sorted order with the smallest number at the front. And then what happens now? The same again. The person that gave them the cards now takes the smallest from each of those two piles, whichever is the smallest on top, and as they go through them, take the smallest of the two, and that goes to the back, and take the smallest of the two, and you keep doing that until you've got all the cards, 
And because you're taking the smallest from the top of the two piles each time, you're guaranteed that you'll end up with, and we hope, in sorted order. So we now hold our breath. So he's taken the cards one at a time. And now, if we look, he's now got 16 cards that were originally shuffled, but hopefully now they're in sorted order. Let's see. So, how much work is actually involved in doing that? Well, if we think about what's happening, as we're passing the cards back, we're not actually doing any work at that point in the sense of how many comparisons. We just split the pack in two and pass them back. And then what do we do then? We split the pack in two and pass the cards back. We split the pack in two and pass the cards back. We've done no comparisons at all at this point. But when we get to the last row, we then start to do work. So we do comparisons here. So each of these, they had two cards, and they just had to do one comparison. So we got eight people, each doing one comparison. So in this whole back row, to do the work that they were doing, we did eight comparisons altogether. They then did the merge algorithm to pass things to the front. And if you think about what's happening at the next row forward, we had this end person, if we look at him, he was taking cards from behind him. And what he did is he did one comparison for each card that he took. So the first card he compares it, picks whichever is the smallest and takes it, and then compares the next two and takes a card. So he does a comparison and takes a card. So there were four cards there, so he did four comparisons actually to take them, though the last card was guaranteed, so he really only did three comparisons. So we do that for each of the four uh, positions here. So we've done three comparisons, six comparisons, and another six comparisons. So on this row, we've only done 12 comparisons altogether. And the same thing happens at the next row. We've now got a four and a four. And for each piece of data, we have to do one comparison. So the amount of work that she does is actually seven comparisons. And so we have seven comparisons there and seven comparisons here, so we've done only 14 comparisons. And the same thing at the next level, so we've got two people with eight things. He's going to look, go through each of them. He's going to do at most 15 comparisons as he takes one card at a time until he's got the whole pack. So out of the 16 cards, at each row, to simplify the numbers a little bit, he does less than 16 comparisons. At the next row, between them, they do less than 16 comparisons. At the next row between them all, they do less than 16 comparisons. And the last row, they do less than 16 comparisons. So a lot less, in fact. Um, so what we've ended up doing is for 16 pieces of data, and we're doing slightly better than this, we're doing 16 comparisons, and then less than that at the next level and next at that. So how many comparisons do we do all together? It depends on how many rows back we have to go. And how many rows back do we do? That's how many times we have to split the data in two. So if we have 16 pieces of data, we end up with one, two, three, four rows all together. And so if we added more data, if we even doubled the data and went up to 32 pieces of data, all we need to do is add one extra row on, which would do an extra level of comparisons. And so that's doing far fewer comparisons than, say, bubble sort would do, because bubble sort, if you had 16 pieces of data, you would have to do 15 comparisons on the first pass, and that's the equivalent of what we're doing at the last level, but then you'd do 15 comparisons on the next pass and 15 comparisons on the next pass and so on all the way back but how many times would you do that how, that's the equivalent to the rows or the number of passes you would do and bubble sort you need 15 rows back to do 16 so it's 15 times 15 so instead of 15 times 15 
lots of comparisons. We're doing 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15. We're doing four times that, and actually a lot less than that because on each row we actually do less than that number of comparisons altogether anyway. So compared to bubble salt, it's vastly faster. It's a lot, lot faster because of using divide and conquer. And that's the power of divide and conquer. On each time we split, we're reducing the work massively that we need to do. And that's basically the merge sort algorithm, which is a very fast algorithm. It's a divide and conquer algorithm.